questions as we go through. But thank you, Mickey. Well, uh, good morning. Listen, I, um, my only opening remark is that I hope that everyone's safe and uh, and not going to stir crazy. I'll take any questions. Mickey, what's you all's um, draft set up for you, Sean and Jeff? I guess are, are you guys? How are you communicating and, and those kinds of? And I guess what are the troubleshooting methods that you have in place? Yeah, look, we're just we're using the technology. You know that uh, I think this is uh, we're using WebEx. I think most of the time uh, uh, for some of these meetings we're using. Uh, I think this one here is Zoom. But look, we're using the technology and we're communicating. We each have a setup in our own homes. And we're ready to go for this draft. Mickey, what have been some of the biggest challenges just in, in all of this? <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think the one challenge is that you don't have as much give and take with, with your entire staff, all of your scouts and, and coaches. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversations that go on, a lot of nuance about, you know, when you're talking about a particular player, a particular prospect and, and the vision that you have for him on your team. And so I think we missed some of that. Mickey, the Cowboys admitted that they uh, suffered a bit of a glitch during their draft, during a trade scenario. Did you guys have any glitches during your mock draft? Nope, we didn't. We, it went, uh, went pretty smooth for us. Hey, Mickey, uh, I joined a minute late. I had some problems connecting. Um, stop me if you have answered this, but can you walk us through what that virtual process was like and what you guys had to do for the mock draft on Monday? Yeah, it was, uh, um, look, we're, we're on a, uh, let's see, how can I best describe this? Look, we, we have, you know, a communication system with the league and we have a backup, which is the backup is a conference call effectively. And, um, you know, there's a system to set up and you, you, you basically send in your pick uh, when you're on the clock. We, we, we have, um, we have a, a screen that's showing who's, who's on the clock, the, the, the clock itself winding down. And then when a pick is made, that pick shows up on the, uh, on the screen. And at the same time, the clock resets to the team that's now on the clock. Um, so it's, look, it's, it's, in a lot of ways, it's similar to what we do uh, when we when we're calling our our uh, our guy at the draft in New York and having him fill out a card and send in the card. So instead of that being a manual process with a with an individual, we're doing it um, you know over the internet. That was it, gonna be you know, it's relatively simple. It's just listen the the things that you you know you worry about is um, you know do you have a, a a glitch with the internet or do you have a power outage or do you have you know something that happens that interrupts that technology. And, uh, you know, for example, I know that we're expecting a storm here tomorrow in New Orleans. And so, um, man, does that include a power outage? And, and, you know, how do we handle a power outage, which, you know, we've got, we've got uh, backup systems in order to do that. Well, Mickey, comparatively speaking to, to previous drafts, are you about as comfortable as you would feel normally, I guess, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, look, I think, I, Look, our scouts do a great job of, of uh, getting the evaluations, getting the information to us. Obviously, you know, we're missing a piece of that this year. Every team is missing a piece of that this year that, that, uh, that comes from the pro days and, and the physicals that haven't been completed. So, um, we're, you know, we're all missing the same amount of information, but we also have a lot of information. Hey, Mickey, um, maybe the first day with one pick and then the second day with two picks, with the new setup, do you maybe envision the third day with maybe a lot of a lot of picks and things moving faster? That communication will be at a premium, or potentially, if there are any issues with communication, it could potentially be on Saturday. Well, I, look, I think it could happen at any time. Obviously, you know, the time's compressed, and and you know, on the third day, when you have um, you know less time per pick and less time to to explore trades I think you know you probably have to do that a little sooner than we would ordinarily do it um, but look I, I think that by then we'll have we'll have uh, uh, the system pretty well down so I, I'm not I'm not expecting a lot of issues but I do I know that we'll be prepared for them uh, you mentioned everybody uh, sort of missing a piece throughout this process 
do you foresee that impacting the decisions you guys make over the next couple of days? Um, I think that, you know, I can't really answer that generally. I think that's more specific to a particular uh, prospect. So I, you know, I'd say on the surface, no. And yet, look, each one of these prospects is a little different. So when you're missing a piece of information that, that might be critical for that particular guy, then obviously it would impact it. How much of a challenge is not having access to the medicals, Mickey? Not only with these rookie prospects, I mean, granted, you had the combine for some of these guys in the first round, but even for free agents, a guy like Emmanuel Sanders, who you guys brought in in the offseason. Yeah, look, I think, uh, first of all, you know, we have physical information on, uh, on the guys that were at the combine. And there was obviously some follow up on some of those players that uh, we haven't been able to complete. Um, so there, there's a piece of that missing. There's the guys that weren't at the combine, you know, that's, that's uh, become a challenge to get, to get medical information on those players. Um, I think what you said about the, the free agents. Now, look, we, we can communicate with the teams that they were with and, and, you know, we have access to some of it. Um, obviously, you know, if a guy's playing the previous year, that, that tells you a lot too. So we, we have some of the information. It is a challenge though. It is a challenge to complete some of these deals particularly deals that are, that are larger um, financially. Mickey, if you can't do a follow-up with a prospect, how much or little does that affect your, your thought process going into the draft uh, in terms of couldn't quite get everything we wanted? Yeah, look, it, it affects you to some degree. It just depends upon, you know, your level of concern about that particular item. And so it, it's, hard to, it's hard to give a general answer for that because it's a lot more, um, prospect specific, you know, it has to do with, with, you know, and the particular prospect where you might be drafting him, you know, what, what you've got invested, you know, so there's, there's a lot of variables. Um, and it's hard to answer that question without, you know, without talking about somebody specifically. Have you guys talked to the league about any protections with these contracts as it applies to both rookies and the free agents because of not having that access you normally would to the medicals? Um, no, not really. Uh-uh. Vicki, I know I'm asking you a lot of technical questions here, but I'm, I'm just curious about a lot, a lot of all this. So say there is a storm and your computer freezes or whatever. So would you have to call the league yourself on maybe your cell phone and say, hey, can we stop the draft? Or do you call Sean and he call? I mean, how do you even know what you would do? I mean, I assume you have a backup plan. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Our, look, I, I, I plan. You know, I, I can speak to my house, you know, and my setup, I've got a generator. So if, if there's a power outage, hopefully the generator comes <laughs> on and I'm, and I'm operating um, normally. If not, if, if the internet's interrupted, look, we have cell phones. We have, uh, um, I can communicate by cell phone to, to Jeff, to Sean, to any of our staff people, as well as uh, we've got an open uh, conference call line um, on, a, on a separate phone with the league. So you know, we've got backup systems. We'll be able to, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to communicate. It's look, certainly if we have a glitch, we have something that happens, we'll notify the league. And if it delays our decision, then, uh, you know, they've got procedures in place to handle that. Mickey, how much has uh, your plan maybe for undrafted rookies changed with this? Have you, I mean, I'm sure I'm assuming you guys have a strategy but how much has the strategy changed given everything that's going on right now? Yeah, we're still, we're still talking about that. That's, you know, that's, a, um, that's a little bit of chaos that happens after the draft. You know, when, when you're all together in a room and you've got a lot of conversations going on at one time at the end of the draft, um, you know, you've got, you've got uh, uh, you know, scouts and coaches and, and uh, all of us involved in that process. And, and so the main thing here is we have to, we have to just be keeping track of what, what those conversations are and what the commitments are that have been made so that we, uh, you know, we, we fill the roster out and we don't, you know, we don't overcommit ourselves. So uh, we're, still talk, we're still discussing that and how that, that's going to operate, but uh, I think we have a pretty good handle on it. Not to get too specific here, um, are you seeing teams talk about deals and trades earlier this week because of communication issues on Thursday night and being the great unknown as how quickly things could come together just in a general way feel like maybe there's more phone traffic or conversation traffic because of things being completed 
in a timely manner. Yeah, I, I feel like so far it's just been pretty normal. Um, I think, you know, I, it's been about the normal amount. Mickey, do you uh, think that what you did in free agency has given you a lot of flexibility throughout the draft? Um, well, you know, look, look, that's always the goal, uh, Ed, um, is to to fill as many of the, our needs and must as we can in in uh, free agency, so that we can we can pretty much have uh, you know free reign during the draft and not be tied to a particular position. Um, I wouldn't say that we, we accomplished everything that we wanted to accomplish in free agency, but I feel pretty good about, about where, you know, where we're at as a roster. And um, yeah, I, I think that we'll, we'll approach this just like we've approached prior years. Mickey, can you kind of, can you say anything about your process on, on, on how you, uh, do, do you guys try to try to try to work out, who might be realistically there for y'all at 24 and to use that to kind of process before before time beforehand yeah how you make a move to trade up for somebody or, or can you just kind of get into that process yeah absolutely and you know we, we we talk pretty extensively about who you know what are the group of players that might be available at 24 what are the group of players that that might be right in front of us you know five six picks um and then, and then what's, what, what potentially is available at the top of the next round. Um, so yeah, we, we, we spend a lot of time discussing that, discussing, hey, is there a particular player that we might want to explore trading up for? Um, yeah, so we spend a lot of time doing that. That's, that's, uh, that's the bulk of this week, actually. And I'm assuming that's just so, you know, if a, if a scenario arises, you already have kind of like, you know, plan A, B, and C kind of worked out for how you'd want to approach yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Mickey, with the willingness to trade up, as you guys have historically, you know, throughout the years, is that a strategy you look to implement? Or is that just more belief in a, a prospect in your scouting and there just comes a guy that you have the perfect vision for? Yeah, I think I think it's a combination of all those things. I, I think it's a conviction on on a particular prospect, a particular player, and a conviction uh, – with our coaching staff that they have a vision uh, for that particular player fitting into our system and helping us, um, you know, win games. So that, that's, that's exactly right. I talked to one team, Mickey, who actually enjoyed the virtual chats because as they described it, you know, at the combine, you've got people just coming in and out. They've had their workout. It's a, it's a little frantic, but getting these players in their own settings and getting to circle back with them, they said they got a better feel for the players. Was that your experience? What did you think of having those guys in a virtual room as opposed to a room? Yeah, I, I think, look, I think it was a good experience. I don't know that I would say it was better uh, um, or worse, really, for that matter. I think it was a good experience, and it was a good supplement to, supplement to you know, some of the work that we had already done on a lot of these guys. You know, we were able to, to get guys a second time and, and, and delve a little deeper into some areas that, that maybe we had questions about. So... I thought it was a really good process, um, um, and I think I think we got a lot out of it. I I, I probably would agree with uh, um, with whoever that that GM was that that look it was valuable. How many thirty visits did you guys actually get in the building before the lockdown? Um, I think that would be zero, as I recall. <laughs> hey, Mickey, I'm sure. The actual three days of the draft is always one of the most fun times because everyone's in the same room and it's probably very chaotic with the back and forth. What are you going to miss about that aspect of things having to do this alone in your house? Yeah, um, well, I, since we haven't done it in our house, I don't know what I'm going to miss. <laughs> um, but I do know, I do know that, uh, yeah, uh, look, I, I love the draft. I love the process that we have. And, and we're a team that has a lot of people in our draft room and there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of conversation, a lot of give and take, a lot of of uh, opinions being given, and and you know I like that. I, I think there's a um, there's an aspect of that, that that draws your staff closer that I like. Everyone talks about the draft, but no one's really talked about the undrafted free agent process after the draft, which is always described as complete chaos in the room. 
So does that majorly change when you're going to have to talk to your staff over the, the phones and everything's happening very quickly? Yeah, well, it'll definitely be different. Um, and look, there'll be a premium on communications because we'll have there'll be a lot of conversations going on independently and, uh, without that ability to, to you know, be in the next room or be right next to each other and keeping track of, of the commitments that are being made. Um, and, and the players in the positions that, you know, you're losing. So it, it's definitely going to be different. We've talked a lot about it. Um, I, you know, I feel good about, about how we're going to handle that. And yet it'll be, it, it'll be different. That's for sure. Mickey, how much can you share on the team's quarterback philosophy? Uh, I, I know you're not going to say what, who you want to draft or whether you want to draft them, but what has your approach been in recent years to, to the need versus not overreacting and forcing yourselves to take one? Yeah, look, I, I think that, um, listen, I think that, that anytime you have a chance to get a, a, a quality quarterback prospect, regardless of your quarterback situation, you know, you, you'd like to take advantage of that. You know, for us, it just hasn't, it hasn't come, you know, it hasn't, there hasn't been the match where we're picking um, with a, with a prospect that we really like. And so, I think our, our, our approach is exactly the same this year is that look, if there's someone there that, that we really like and have a vision for at the time we're picking, then, then we're not afraid to pull that trigger. You're, you're probably not qualified to answer this question because of your lack of drafting quarterbacks, but is that a position where if you've got a bunch of guys graded, you know, 85, 85, 85 on your board, the quarterback with a grade of 78 comes into that conversation or, you know, something like, like does quarterback have to be judged on almost a different scale? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I look again, I think that gets back to, Hey, do you have a clear vision for, you know, a prospect? Do you, do you, do you, do you uh, how does he fit with your team, with your roster and, and, and um, Look, it's, it's hard to answer in a general way um, because, look, when we when we develop a, a cloud, a group of players that we're, we're looking at a particular uh, spot in the draft, those, those grades are pretty similar um, regardless of position. So it's hard to it's hard for me to say, hey, we're going to elevate someone just because of of the position. Mickey, how much did what happened in the Vikings game influence your thinking in the off season or you know how, how did you look at that how did you perceive that moving forward as to how much it influenced your off season plan in total yeah I, I don't think that any one particular game or any one particular play for that matter uh, uh influences you i think look the the, the thing that i think we've been, had a, had a, a a lot of success doing i think we're good at is is removing the emotion and evaluating our team and our roster. Um, I, you know, I think our coaches do a great job of that. Our personnel department does a great job of that. And then we move forward based upon those evaluations. And so uh, I think it will be a mistake if we, if we let one game or one event um, influence, influence us too much. And, and look, you got to take that emotion out of it. That's why, that's why some of those decisions and some of these uh, uh, um, items that we want to get completed in the off season, you know, we take our time. We, 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 uh, we don't rush into, into a plan. We, you know, we let that develop. I'll, Mickey, stick, with this, I'll stick with the same influence uh, theme here that Ed just brought. How much does Christian McCaffrey's contract influence the way you look at Alvin Kamara's contract going forward? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I, you know, I haven't really thought about that yet. So, um, you know, clearly you pay attention to the market, you pay attention to what guys are getting paid around the league. And, and look, there's not, it's never just about one contract or one guy. It's about a whole group of them. And, and you know, we'll follow the same process we've all, always followed. How much information would you say has been lost on the non-combine guys with the, you know, height, weight, speed measurements and being able to do your prototypes? And how do you fill in those gaps if you can't get a time or something? Yeah, the, look, um, well, you can't fill in the gaps if you can't get the information. You, it, you know, you can't fill up, fill in the gaps. So you, you know, you're you're basically trusting, um, you know, what you see, what what our what our scouts and what our coaches see when they evaluate the tape. And 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 look, I, there's been a lot of decisions, a lot of good decisions made based upon that over the years. And 
and you know, I trust our, I trust the uh, ability of our people to evaluate. And just uh, the donation you did, just made to the 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 uh, draftathon. Why was that important to you to do? Well, look. For, first of all, I can't take too much credit for that because that was uh, uh, I think that was Howie Roseman's idea in Philadelphia, and, and he brought it to the group that uh, hey, this would be a good idea if we each contributed. Um, you know, it's it's going to raise a, a pretty good amount of money, and um, I think he was able to get get uh, Doug Peterson to challenge the coaches, and so hopefully we'll end up with a half a million or so that we can we can contribute. That won't be the only thing thing that we do, but um, look, I think it was a good program, and and uh, I'm excited to be part of it. Back to Nick's uh, first question. Uh, some of those guys have been doing virtual pro days. How much stock do you put into the the times that some of them were running, or some of the measurements? Yeah, look, I, I listen. We, we we gather the information. We you know we we look at the uh, we look at the tapes. We look at the uh, video, not the tapes. We look at the video of those workouts. That they're good to have. You know, it's good to see guys doing things. It's good to see. You know, if, if a guy has a shoulder issue, for example, and you see him bench press, that's valuable information. So uh, it gives you confidence that, that uh, you know, if he had a shoulder injury, for example, that, that he's recovering from that enough to do, um, you know, the bench press or even push-ups for that matter. So it, it's just, a, it's, you know, it's hard to say that you're, you're putting a lot of stock in, in, in that information, but you, you're just gathering these bits and pieces uh, to put together a big picture. Along those lines, do you know if your scouting department requested any workouts specifically from any prospect? Yeah, we, 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 you know, we'll request guys to do certain things. Yes, we do. Mickey, is there a position that jumps out in terms of depth in this year's class? Um, well, I, look, I think the most obvious thing is that there's a lot of receivers at the top of this draft that are, that are really good players. And so that, that's that probably more than most years. And, and so I think that's the thing that jumps out at you the most. Hey, Mickey, um, I saw where Diana Rossini just reported that Sean had a, a, a Zoom meeting with the players and told them there'll be no off season. Show up in the best shape of your life in July, ready for training camp. Could you just maybe elaborate on that and the thought process and how you all are handling all that? Yeah, look, I, you know, Sean, I, I don't know what, what Sean said exactly, but um, we're going to have communication with our players during this time. You know, we're going to have some things that, 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 um, we talk to them about, I, I, I think his reference is more about, look, pay attention to your family, pay attention to keeping yourself and your family safe, abide by, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the orders of each of the states that you're in, we'll handle the rest of it, get yourself in shape. And then when we're able to get together, um, we'll move on and, and we'll have a great, uh, a great training camp, camp and, and, and a great season. So, I think his message is more about guys uh, paying attention to them, their families and themselves. And we're not going to have, you know, any physical activity that we do virtually. How much easier is that to do that, Mickey, given that some teams, like, as you know, I cover the Cowboys, have an entirely new coaching staff. Uh, I would imagine with having Drew Brees there and for the most part, a lot of the same pieces, it's a little bit easier to pump the brakes on OTA when typically you're installing a lot of the same stuff at training camp anyways. Yeah, look, I, I think I think it is a bit of an advantage if you have, um, you know, you have the same coaching staff. You haven't had a lot of changes on your coaching staff. You have a core group of players that are the same, and and um, you know, a system that look we've had here for 14 years. So, I think that does make it easier. I would I would equate it back to uh, what was it 2011 when we we didn't have an off season. Um, you know, we were able to hit the ground running, uh, you know, at the end of that period. So, um, I, you know, I feel, I, I feel, I probably would feel a little differently if we did have a lot of changes on our roster and, and our coaching staff, but we're fortunate that we don't. I just wanted to clarify the last question. Um, is there going to be no, I guess, formal off season? Like the communication is just like you would have, I, like, I guess, is it more casual is what you were saying? as far as the virtual program goes? Yeah, we'll, we'll have some stuff that, that, that guys will participate in. And um, look, I've, I've been so focused on the draft, to be honest with you, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about that off season uh, program that, as we're gonna go forward. But, um, you know, we're not gonna be doing virtual workouts, uh, okay. you know, and, and things like that. So 
uh, again, we want to we want to make sure guys are focused on on their families and safety. And and look, we have a lot of guys that we have great faith and trust in in terms of being in shape when when we do get going uh, for training camp. Vicky, what what is the hope for a July training camp right now? It, it, does that fall under complete unknown, or or does that fall under what what you're working toward? Unless you hear differently. Yeah, look, I th- I think that's a good question. Um, I, listen, you, you guys know as much as I do, really. You know, we don't know what the future holds. We're gonna we're gonna plan as if we're gonna have uh, uh, you know a normal training camp, but um, you know we don't know that that, that those decisions will be. Will be made above uh, above my pay grade. Mickey, uh, I'm sure we've asked you about this before, but uh, but what what impact has has Jeff Ireland had uh, on these these last couple of drafts with you guys? What, what what does he bring to the table that's that's allowed you to be successful in the draft? Yeah, look, Jeff, Jeff's tremendous, and and uh, it's not just Jeff; it's it's him and his entire. Uh, College personnel department. You know, I, I, I love the uh, I love the talent that we have on on our uh, uh, college uh, um, personnel staff. They're, they're great evaluators. They're conscientious. They're they're uh, uh, they're really hardworking uh, <clears throat> as a group. And and the best thing I think we've got going is it is that they have a great we have a great level of communication between our coaching staff and our scouts. And so. Uh, our coaches, Sean and, and, and his staff, do a great job of communicating exactly what they need uh, and what they're looking for at each and every position. And, and uh, um, I think that's led to, um, you know, the success we've had in the last few drafts. And, and, and look, Jeff's a huge part of that. Mickey, do you think you guys have done enough in this offseason that when you go for that first pick in the first round that it will be a best player available as opposed to – needing to fill a specific need? Well, you know, listen, I think I've said this before. Look, that's always our goal. Um, and I think we've been able to, to, to you know, stick to that philosophy over the years. Um, I, I feel like it served us well, and, and, and we'll do that again this year. But at the same time, look, again, it doesn't – oftentimes it comes down to a choice between three or four guys all graded in the same vicinity. Um, and, and then you look to, to, hey, how does this guy fit our roster and what we need right now? So it's, it's always a combination of, of the two. Uh, but obviously, we lean toward the highest graded player. Why don't we take one more, you... one more question, please? Go ahead, Mike Triplett. Yeah. Is there anything that in this process you think you or teams in general would be less likely to draft whether that's somebody that uh, I think Sean mentioned if there's character or injury concerns that you didn't have a chance to investigate or maybe a raw developmental player or a quarterback since you don't have an off season to uh, yeah. work with them has that changed any of draft philosophies with any of those categories yeah I, I Mike I, I don't know that I can say it would change philosophies I do think what we've had discussions about about guys that are a little bit more developmental and the fact that we're not going to have as as much time with them this off season. And so they're going to be less, it's going to be harder for them to contribute in year one than it would ordinarily. But look, it comes down to, Hey, what's, what's your long-term vision for these guys. It's not going to prevent us from taking someone that we have a long-term vision for, but we recognize that ah, we may not get as much in year one as you would otherwise. And, and look, I think that's generally true. If we don't have an off season with these guys, um, then it's going to be harder for them, for any player to contribute uh, in year one than it would ordinarily. All right, uh, Mickey, thank you very much for your time. Uh, members of the media, we'll look forward to circling in with you uh, tomorrow night uh, following the first round. And if you guys need anything at all, you can reach out to me or Justin or Evan uh, Davis and, and anybody in our department. And uh, thank you again, Mickey. Good to see you, Mickey. Yeah, thank Rose. you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Be safe. Hey, who are y'all taking in the first?